This is your ship. Look at her. She's over 600 feet long. She's a light cruiser with six-inch guns. From keel to forepeak, she's a symbol of our American industrial skill. The same skill that also builds landing boats and battleships and airplanes and makes the equipment so that they can do their job. She was built for one purpose, to hit the enemy hard, to hit them fast and often. Here in this busy shipyard is where your cruiser was born on a warm May morning in 1942. The same morning when across the world, other cruisers struck at the enemy in the Battle of the Coral Sea. Here is the very beginning of your ship, her first keel plate swinging into place. Among all the workers who built this ship, not the least were sure-handed girls, hurrying to break production records, and thus to break the enemy. Hurry, the Marines have landed at Guadalcanal. Hurry, Rommel's in Egypt. Hurry, Americans in Africa. And here, finished and ready for launching ahead of schedule, is your ship and her sister ship. Workers can be proud of these fast fighting ships. The Navy is proud of them. Our enemies fear them and their dreadful destructive power. Ready for commissioning, ready to take her place for the fleet. Here are the men who will fight your ship. Here is their captain, on whom all the responsibility will fall. He accepts command of your ship, pledging himself and his crew to fight her as American ships have always been fought, bravely, completely, and victoriously. Now she's being warped into a loading dock to take on stores for the long cruise to the battleground. Products from every state in the Union will be needed for your ship to accomplish her mission. First aboard are the shells, which will carry death and destruction to the Japanese Navy, both star shells and armor-piercing shells. Deep down in the magazines, they're stowed away. When the call to battle sounds, the hoist will bring them up faster than they went down. Next, there is food. Your ship may be gone for a long time. She must have supplies, enough for 3,000 meals a day. Your ship then weighs anchor and puts out to sea. Every day, all day, there is gunnery practice. Here is a secondary battery crew making practice runs with their dual purpose guns. When contact is made with the enemy, this gun crew will be ready for action. Below decks, there's a pharmacy or drugstore, just like there is at home. Your ship is home now to almost a thousand men. There's a barber shop aboard. And a ship service store or soda fountain for everything from razor blades to ice cream. There's a machine shop for repairs. And always, there's plenty for fighting men to eat. Chow in sailor language. Good chow, like thick steaks. There are turkeys for holidays, when the men of your ship would like most to be at home. And to go with them, there are well-baked pies. Now she's at the Panama Canal, making the transit from ocean to ocean, en route to her rendezvous somewhere in the South Pacific. Full speed ahead, your ship and all her men are in battle trim. Here is her landfall, one of our island stepping stones on the long road to Japan. From offshore, its blue mountains show no signs of the savage, desperate man-to-man -man fighting which wrested them from the enemy. There's a landing field on Island X, begun by the Japs, but Americans are completing it, and Army and Navy planes will fly from it to attack the Jap-held islands to the north. 
But on this very island, there's still fighting to be done. The Japs never give up without a battle. They have to be pried out. To get at them, our trucks and tools and men must slog along through the muck to the front line deep in the steaming jungle. Our men must also fight the nerve-wracking heat, the mosquitoes and malaria. Time out for a needed rest, even though the enemy is not far off. Then on your toes and forward march up the beach, on the alert for the enemy. Meanwhile, your ship takes position in its task force. Her mission, to silence shore batteries on an island to the north. But wait a minute, our patrol plane reports an enemy force of major size is moving toward the same objective, probably to attempt a landing sometime late tonight. The task force takes the bone in its teeth and searches ahead to meet the enemy. Condition able. General quarters for all hands. Fighters from the landing field take off to intercept the enemy bombers. And here is your ship's baptism of fire. Gunners put up a barrage against the scouting plane from the Jap Island. And at the same time, she opens up on the shore batteries, slugging at them, softening them up so the Marines can take over. One Jap, our gunners got the scouting plane. All afternoon the gunners pour it on. But the big job, the main bout, will be tonight, when your ship closes with the Japanese fleet, with somebody your own size. Most naval engagements fought by ships like your ship are fought at night. The two sides feel for each other with detecting devices, and then they let go, like this. and your ship is in there slugging. Now another island belongs to us. Jet transports and cargo ships will rot on these shores for years. And so will what's left of Tojo's little warriors. Its first mission successfully accomplished, your ship again takes position with her task force. Shell cases are sorted and stowed away for salvage later on. And the proof of her victory is painted on the bridge. There will be other trophies to hang up, but this one is the first and the heart. Your ship has been in action, an action victorious not alone for the Navy, but for all who build so well the ships and parts of ships and planes that fight upon the sea. To win that action, the men of your ship gave up their lives. To win new action, to scatter the enemy and drive him from the seas, the Navy and its men need other ships and parts of ships and planes. And building them will bring us victory.